I'm Adam. And I'm Chester. And, and this, this is Where There's, there's a Williams, There's a way. way. Hey, Chester, do you have a favorite berry? Definitely watermelon. Watermelon's my wife's favorite fruit, but I was actually asking about berries. My favorite's the blueberry. It's a superfood. Fun fact, watermelons are berries, and so are cantaloupes, cucumbers, squash, and pumpkins, scientifically called pippos. These fruit all fall into the scientific category of berry, one with a tough rind, multiple flat seeds, and pulpy flesh. Chester, you always have to make things so complicated. Or academic. In today's book, we see a young girl and her grandma paying their respects to the land. Let's get started. Berry Song by Michaela Goad. A note to the forager, please only gather berries and other wild foods that you and an experienced adult can identify beyond a doubt. There are many toxic lookalikes. Blueberry, Nangoon berry, strawberry, crowberry. On an island at the edge of a wide, wild sea, grandma shows me how to live on the land. Together we pull hemlock branches from the salty ocean, heavy with herring eggs like tiny stars. On the beach we gather ribbons of slippery seaweed dancing in the tide. By the tumbling icy falls we dip our nets for silvery salmon hidden beneath the current. And in the forest we pick berries. Salmonberry, cloudberry, blueberry, nangoonberry, Huckleberry, soapberry, strawberry, crowberry. The berries sing to us, glowing like little jewels. We sing too, so berry and bear know we are here. Seeing them catch salmon reminds me of something that I learned on my Alaskan cruise. There are five types of salmon in North America, and you can remember what they are by using your fingers. By pointing out a chart? You can associate them with each digit. The chum is the thumb the pink salmon pinky king salmon the middle finger you got it the silver salmon well there's only the pointer and ring finger left so i'm going to guess the ring finger exactly because that's where you wear the silver and finally the pointer is the sockeye why is that the pointer because it's like poking someone in the eye which you probably do with your pointer finger sockeye that's a bit of a stretch I don't disagree, but it still works. Grandma tells me, we speak to the land. As the land speaks to us, I say, huckleberry, soapberry, strawberry, crowberry, thimbleberry, swanberry, bogberry, chalkberry. The forest sings to us through misting rain and whoosh of wing, the sweet smell of cedar and the tickle of moss. We sing too, so the land knows we are grateful. Grandma tells me, we take care of the land. As the land takes care of us, kunochish, I say, giving thanks. Thimbleberry, swampberry, bogberry, chalkberry, lingonberry, raspberry, bunchberry, cranberry. Our ancestors sing to us, their voices dancing on wind and water. We sing too, so they know that we'll always remember. And we sing for the future, so that all will hear and all will know this beautiful berry song. Grandma tells me, we are part of the land. As the land is a part of us, I say. I noticed they listed strawberries earlier. I did know that strawberries are not actually a fruit. Fun fact, botanists call a strawberry a false fruit, a pseudocarp. A strawberry is actually multiple fruits that consist of many tiny individual fruits embedded in a fleshy receptacle. And the tiny seeds are actually the fruits. Do you want to know something interesting about blackberries? Of course I do. Unlike most fruit, blackberries are actually red when they are unripened and not green. What, no fun fact? Nope, fun fact. A scientific study of blackberries is called batology. So a batologist is someone who has keen interest in blackberries, not bats. I think today's fun facts are very good. Unlike your joke. The ocean sings to us, rolling ashore like a beating drum. 
We sing too, so the tides know we are home. Together, we make salmon berry syrup and cranberry marmalade until the kitchen glows like a summer sky. We feast on huckleberry pie and strawberry crisp, raspberry scones, and freshly whipped soap berries. We share gifts of blueberry jelly and nangoon berry jam. Gunochish, we say, giving thanks. The nights grow long, edged in frost, as sea fades gently into sky. The forest is resting, the forest is dreaming, waiting for berry song. And so the seasons change. On an island at the edge of a wide, wild sea, I take my little sister's hand. Lingonberry, raspberry, bunchberry, cranberry, salmonberry, cloudberry, blueberry, nangoonberry. I have so much to show you. There's so many berries listed here that I've never heard of before. Like what? Soap berries? Bitter little red berries. Salmon berries? Fun fact, they are named salmon berries not because the orangey pink color is the same as the fish's skin or flesh, but rather from the roe. Or eggs. Or fish eggs. It doesn't seem to matter what type, the native Klingit people of Alaska seem to love the berries. Thus the berry song. And speaking of loving things, if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Chester. And, and this, this is Where, Where There's a Williams, Williams There's, there's a, a Way. In the land of Kliku, like the young girl in this book, I too live on an island at the edge of a wide, wide sea where I grew up picking Kliku, or berries. My home is Shitka, or Sitka, Alaska. It is the same island my Klingit grandmother, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents called home. All year long, I excitedly wait for berry season, for the ju juicy salmon berries that strum the first notes of berry song, and the cranberries after the first freeze that signal its end. Every time I wander back into the forest, I am a little kid again, spellbound by the magic and joy of berry song. As Klingit people, our way of life has always been woven into the rhythm of the lands and sea, to the animals and plants that nurture our body and spirit. It has always meant more than food or survival. This way of life honors a deep kinship with the land rooted in respect, balance, and reciprocity. Klingit values teach us to treat the land and our non-human kin with great reverence and gratitude and it is often during traditional food harvesting practices, such as berry picking, when ancestral knowledge and values are passed down from one generation to the next. Berries have always been a celebrated part of the Klingit life. They are a traditional diet staple providing essential nutrients eaten fresh or preserved with fish or seal oil, or pressed and dried into berry cakes. Today we also process berries through freezing, canning, or baking delicious treats. Historically, berries were used as medicine, trade goods, ceremonial gifts, and symbols of wealth and prestige. And much like hunting grounds or salmon streams, certain berry patches were claimed and stewarded by different clans. Traditional stories tell us of the importance of berries, how they nourished a young boy, climbing his chain of arrows to the moon, or how Raven taught us to preserve them. Berries are one of the most important foods brought out during Ku'u X, a major ceremonial and often memorial gathering. Berries hold great symbolic and spiritual significance. They connect us to land, community, and culture. They remind us of home. When I am out picking berries, I feel rooted in the land. If I am sad or troubled before entering the forest, I always leave happy. Berry picking is medicine. Berries are gifts from the earth, gathered and shared in gratitude. When I am lost in a patch of salmon berries that drip from the leaves in hues of sunshine, coral, and ruby, I am in awe of Mother Earth's many gifts, and I try my best to listen to the berries, to the forest and water, to Raven's musical call, to my Klingit ancestors and the children yet to come. I hear the same sparkling song in my grandmother's chuckle, as she tells me about summers at the salmon cannery with her family, when coming home with a bucket full of berries spared her from any scolding. I hear the same chorus in my mother's voice as she passes along the wisdom of my great aunt. When the blueberry leaves start to turn red, that's when the fruit is sweetest. 
and I hear the same melody in my young nephew, when together we sing and sway through a mountainside meadow, our hearts, much like our buckets and baskets, full to the brim. Gunochish, I teach him to say, giving thanks. The song is everywhere if you listen. Can you hear it? Listening offers a powerful opportunity to build a deeper kinship with the land. Among its many lessons are the ones shared in this book. We speak to the land as the land speaks to us. The land is alive. Everything has spirit. Talk to the berries. Learn their indigenous names. Ask them for permission to be harvested. Thank them. There is a magnificent symphony of song that goes into making one small berry. Sun, rain, and wind do their part. So do the salmon, birds, and bears, whose life cycles and foraging fertilize the forest and spread berry seeds. Other animals help spread the seeds too, including humans. The hummingbirds, bees, butterflies, and other insects help when they pollinate the berry blossoms, as do the ancient trees that die and nourish the soil. When you speak to the land and listen in return, you'll be amazed at what you learn. We take care of the land, and the land takes care of us. As the land gives to us, it is our responsibility to give in return. When picking berries, it is important to be respectful. We share the forest, take only what you need, and can sensibly process, leaving berries behind for our animal relatives. Taking care of the land also means protecting Mother Earth in a larger sense. Learning about commercial fishery over-harvesting, oil pipelines, mining, logging, and other damaging and unstable human industries is a great place to start. Protesting, contacting legislators, voting, volunteering with local environmental groups, thinking about where you spend your money and sharing what you learn are just a few ways to get involved. Together we can unite in defense of Mother Earth, becoming caretakers and ensuring a future for all. We are part of the land as the land is part of us. We are not separate from the natural world. Even in the city, nature is all around us. It is all one song. The Tongass National Forest, where my family and I live, and where I set the story, is the largest intact temperate rainforest in the world and the largest national forest in the United States. Not only is it incredibly important to us humans and our non-human relatives that live here, but it is a vital in helping combat the global climate crisis. The Tongass is home to the traditional territories of the Tlingit, Haida, and Shibshiyan nations who have coexisted in balance with the land since time immemorial. Today, Native and non-native people work together to protect these wild lands. Indigenous history and rights, land sovereignty, and environmental justice are closely intertwined. I encourage you to listen to and lift indigenous voices. In many places around the world, indigenous people are leading the way in protecting our planet. I encourage you to find out whose traditional territory you call home, learn about their history and the issues you are facing today and seek ways to engage. Gunochish. Thimbleberry, Swampberry, Black Currant, Lingonberry, Raspberry. Did you know the tiny hairs on berries are called styles? Styles are left over from berry blossoms. They serve to protect the berry from damage. Styles are completely safe for consumption 